recruiting them and moving them from um, through the recruiting process, I should say, there is a couple of things that, that you would want to go ahead and take a look at as um, as the applicants are coming in. So once the requisitions, and I believe there's only um, Carrie and Michael, I believe my understanding is that both of you were going to be creating the requisitions in the system, and we could definitely schedule a second call if you like so that we could walk you through that process if needed. But for all of the rest of you um, who are the general managers, I'm just going to manage the applicants and move them through the system, extending the offers and so on, then we're going to go ahead and walk you through that process today. So once the requisitions are in the system and they've been creating and been created in the system, they've been posted in your different job boards that you're going to use, you're going to start seeing notifications in the system that are coming in, letting you know that you have applicants that have been applying to those positions. Now, in order to, um, once you get those notifications, the notification is actually going to provide you a path of where to go to view those applications. But I'm going to show you that path today. So when logging in, you want to go ahead and use your administrative access that they have provided to you. And I believe Steve mentioned that all of you should have this particular access already. So when you do log in to your ADP site, you want to log in as a practitioner or an administrator of your organization. Now, um, in order to access all of the applications, you would want to go ahead and go under the process tab here, hover down to where it says a talent and select application. So you should be able to see this on your end as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on applications here. And this is my test database. You're going to see quite a few um, information already in the system. Now, um, it's automatically going to bring you to the dashboard where all of your applications are stored. Now, because you have the practitioner access for your organization, you're going to be able to see all of the applications that are coming into the system. Um, you do have the opportunity to first show the applications that you want to view. And if you select this down arrow, you're going to be able to see the different options. You could choose from any of these options here. Typically, you will select, of course, the open requisition, but if you ever have to go back, um, maybe for some closed requisitions or on hold requisitions, you have the opportunity to see those applicants for those particular reps as well. Now, in this particular area here where you see application status, this is where you'll be able to see um, or filter, I should say, the specific applicants based on the status that they're currently in. So let's say that you just want to view the new the new applications or the applicants that currently are under the new application status. Then you could simply, um, let me just do this really quickly, select and unselect here so I could go ahead and blank everything. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the new application option. And then down below, I'm going to receive all of the applicants that currently have the status. And you'll see that the status is over here on your right-hand side, have the status of new application. This will allow you to go ahead and review the applications. Now, I know you all work in different um, company codes or organizations, so you have your own assigned company codes. You could absolutely um, select any of these filters here to filter your criteria. So if you know the requisition number, you could either filter here, or you could also type in the requisition number here that you're looking for. That way it would filter that information, and you could focus on those applicants specifically to the requisition for your uh, particular uh, company code, per se. Um, so if that's the case, you do have the ability to do so. So if I enter here, for example, um, 1021 um, or 1021. It's going to go ahead and provide me only the, or maybe I didn't have any under that. Let me see here. Did I select the incorrect one? No, I do have 1021. 1020, let's say. All right. So you'll see that it's going to filter all of the requisitions or all the applicants that, that apply for the 1020 requisition here. And you could do that with any of these fields here. So if you want to do it by job title, you could type in the job title up here. You could also type in the hiring manager. So if you're the hiring manager for this particular requisition, you could type in your name as well. So any of these particular options that you see here in blue will be something that you could go ahead and search for if you need to. Now, as um, you're screening the applicants, you'll have the ability to go ahead and click on each candidate profile if you need to. 
but uh, in this particular section, you also have the opportunity to also add new applications if needed. So let's say somebody just provided you, they just went into your business, and they say that they're interested in the position, maybe they're not able to um, use the computer, they don't have access to that, and they provide you their resume, maybe you conduct a quick interview um, there on the spot, and maybe you feel like they're a good fit, and they provide you their information, but they don't have access to a computer, you could go ahead and add their application into the system manually if you, if you like. You do have the ability to do so. You can go ahead and do that by selecting this Add New Application option. It's going to open up the box where it includes all of the requisitions that you currently have. Um, let me move this over here. All right. Um, if I'm moving my bubble here. Okay. So it's going to go ahead and provide you all of the requisitions that are currently open for your organization to date. So you'll see that the status is open. It'll give you the day that it was open, and you could simply select the requisition that that particular person um, would be a good fit for, a good candidate for. You could go ahead and simply select it and then continue on entering their information that they have supplied to you. And it'll be the simple information such as um, their phone number, their name, their address, um, and if they provided you a resume, you could scan it and upload it into the system as well. Okay. Now, in this particular section, you also have the opportunity to change the status of multiple applicants at a time. So let's say that for this 1020 position, you've already interviewed, you already um, selected a specific candidate that would be a good fit for that particular position, and you're ready to bring them on board, you've already extended the offer, you're just waiting for them to go ahead and complete I'm sorry, to accept the offer per se. And so all of these people that keep applying, that just apply to that position, for example, that you would want to come into the system and change their status, either reject them or move them to a different status. You do have the ability to do so all at once in this particular section. So if you see here, we have multiple 10, 20 um, of applicants. And as you go ahead and select all of those applicants here, for example, let me just pick a few. So let's say I selected these here, and you could select this box as well, so I could select all of them all at once. That's something that's available. And here where it says change status, you could go ahead and click on this option, and it's going to open up this particular section where it allows you to go ahead and change the status of those individuals. And the status is, will be available for you to select. <laughs> so you could go ahead and say, um, that this was a, we're rejecting them. And then we have this position code that you could select from. And then we could say that position is no longer available because we already hired somebody or we're expecting to hire someone for that position. And then you could go ahead and enter any comments. These comments that you enter up here are strictly for internal purposes only. So this is not something that the applicants will be able to see. Down below, you do have the opportunity to notify those candidates that you selected, so you do have that option. You can go ahead and click on this email option here. If your organization has an auto-reply email address, it's gonna go ahead and include that auto-reply email address automatically, highly recommended since you do guys have different organizations, or you could simply, whomever is um, in charge of that particular requisition, you could enter um, an email here, your personal email or your organization's email here. You do have the option to choose a template to go ahead and send out and highly recommend that you all as an organization create specific templates that you're going to use. This will make it super seamless once you start using the system instead of having to customize a template every single time. If you already have the templates created in the system on the recruiting settings, then it's simply as just selecting the template here. It will autofill that particular template that you have created and all you have to do is select done so I could go ahead and send out those particular uh, notifications. I'm gonna select done here. So I can move those individuals to a different status. Right, so it's gonna go ahead and notify you that it was successfully changed and those particular employees are no longer available. I'm sorry, applicants are no longer here. Now, we, before we move into a next section, does anybody have any questions on this particular area that we just reviewed or any of the information that I just reviewed with you? 
and can let me know through the chat or you could unmute your line as well. And that, I'll go ahead and take silence as there's no questions at this time. We'll go ahead and move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and pick all requisitions here because I have one that I want to go ahead and test out here. All right. So now, once you have your candidates, if you're planning to screen them and um, invite them for interviews, for example, or what have you, and communicate with that particular applicant or review their application, you always have the opportunity to do so. The way that you would do that will be by selecting the candidate name. So each candidate name is going to be a link to that particular profile. So if I go ahead and click on that particular profile, it's going to open up the candidate's profile that they have submitted along with the application that they completed for that requisition. Now, up here at the top, you automatically get the application's personal information. So if you selected on the settings for them to include their phone number, their email address, and their um, mailing address, that information will be available here. You also have the option to go ahead and view the VSIP information for EEO1 reporting. Not sure if that's something you plan to collect, um, but it's a setting as well for recruiting purposes that you could go ahead and activate if needed. On your right-hand side here, you always have the option to view the entire application as a PDF file. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that would look like here. If you decide to print it out, we have a lot of uh, clients that print it out for if they're conducting interviews, if you want to go ahead and have a copy of it so that you ha could have it handy, that's available for you here. So this will be an example of the um, application for that particular candidate. So it'll give you the application information, their personal information, if they submitted their education, their background history, their employment history, any skills, licenses, certifications will be available here. Um, if they did attach a resume, I will let you know that they did attach a resume as well. And then if you have posting questions that were included on your requisition that the applicant needs to complete when they're applying for any positions for your organization, then you'll be able to see those particular questions here. You'll also be able to see the self-attestation and their electronic signature as well as when they actually sign that particular application. Down at the bottom, if anything was already scheduled with this particular applicant in regards to interviewing, you'll be able to see the interview dates and times and so on. Down at the bottom, you'll also be able to see the auditing of uh, um, an audit trail, I should say, of this applicant's history. So what has happened with this particular applicant, you'll be able to see that information, any notes that were added into the requisition, I'm sorry, into the applicant's profile, and then any communication that has been provided to the applicant, you'll be able to see that as well. So I just wanted to show you what that would look like. I'm going to go ahead and close this and go back to our candidate profile here. Now, the system will automatically let you know what requisition they apply to, so you'll be able to see that information right off the back. You'll also be able to see additional information like the hiring manager, who the hiring manager is, if you have a specific recruiter, the day that they apply, their status for the and throughout the recruiting process. You could always change the status of the applicant here, and I'll show you in a little bit how you could do that. You'll see the resume. You could always download the resume as well. If the applicant included other attachments or if somebody internally within your organization added an attachment to this particular profile, you do have the ability to add and view those attachments in the profile as well. We do have the option for profile relevance. This is not something that's activated in my test database, but it's something that's available uh, for you to use within your system if you do decide to activate it for your organization. The profile relevance, what it does is that it's going to go ahead and read the application information that the applicant submitted, compare it with the requisition that they apply to, and cross-reference that information. The system will then provide you a low, medium, or high fit for that position, so it's a good way of also screening through applicants and ensuring that you're focusing on the pool of candidates that meet your requirements. Now, on your right-hand side here, if the applicant applies to multiple positions within your organization, then you'll be able to see that information down below. 
You could always move from requisition to requisition. So right now we're seeing the 1023 human resource manager position, but they also apply for the administrative assistant position. So if I click on this rec number here, it's going to bring me back to um, the other application that this, this individual applied for. And there'll be the same information um, in regards to personal information. It's just going to give you the detailed information for that uh, other application that they submitted for the administrative assistant. So if you ask different posting questions on the requisition, you'll see those different answers compared to the human resources one. But I'll go ahead and go back to the human resource one here. Okay. Now, um, in our system, you do have the option or your applicants will have the option to, to enter their background information when they're applying for the position. This is not something that's a requirement for them to complete, but it is something that's available for them to um, submit after they complete the application. So they have the ability to create a profile and on the profile, they'll be able to submit any of this information as well. Now, for posting questions, these are something that you could go ahead and add when you're creating the requisition. My understanding is that you all are not going to create the requisitions. That's going to be handled by two members of your organization, um, and those members might include those particular questions. And so if they do include questions on the requisition, you'll be able to see the answers that the applicant provided to you. And I believe this will be a better example. Maybe I should have kept it on this one. So let me go ahead and show you here. So you'll see that if um, in our system, you're, you do have the option to uh, ask questions on the requisition for them to, of course, answer while they're going through the application. And depending on some of the questions, if you do select what we call knockout questions, the system, based on how the applicant responds to that question, will automatically place the individual on a knockout pool uh, versus a pool that meets all your requirements, and it makes it a lot easier also to sort through applicants. We know a lot of the times applicants just um, complete an application just to fill in the boxes, and they don't necessarily um, will be a good fit for that particular position. So this will be something that will help you determine whether that individual will be a good fit for that position or not. So the system will notify you that they were knocked out based on how they answered a question. We're not rejecting them or anything. We're just putting them in a different pool of candidates. Down at the bottom here, you have the option to schedule interviews. Now, I'm not too sure if your organization uses um, the Office 365 Outlook or the G Suite um, Google Calendar, but if your organization does, then you do have the option to activate that in the settings. And when you're scheduling here, you as a practitioner will be able to um, enter your credentials for your, your Google uh, Calendar or your three, Office 365, depending on what you want to use. This will allow you to see your availability on your calendar. Uh, I know that's something that's useful just so that you won't have to go back and forth. The system will automatically bring your calendar over. You're able to go ahead and add additional interviewers if needed within your organization. You'll be able to see their availability as well. And once you schedule the interview, that interview will be scheduled in your calendar. Now, if you don't have those or you don't use that particular product, those particular products, that's okay. You can still go through this process here, as you see here in my screen, and you'll be able to go ahead and schedule the interviews directly from here as well. I'm going to go ahead and go into the next section, which is the no section. This is something that's available internally for all of you. So this is super helpful and useful, especially if you have multiple individuals, for example, that are screening or moving the applicants through the recruiting process, conducting interviews or what have you. This will be super useful for all of you to ensure that you add notes here. These notes are only for internal purposes only, so you're able to go ahead and copy paste notes as well or type in your notes in regards to this applicant. Um, that way others within your organization or others that are working on this particular requisition as well, they'll be able to see those notes in the system. And then down below here is our last option, which is the communication templates. Our system will automatically review or provide you the entire list of all of the communications that have been sent out to the applicant. 
You also have the option to compose um, emails to those particular applicants. And coming July 11, we're having an enhancement to this particular platform. And you will also be able to send out text messages um, going forward. So that's a pretty neat feature that we have available that is coming on July 11th for all of our clients. Uh, but for now, you do have the email option. So you can simply select the email portion, select your template. And again, I highly recommend that all of you or either some of your practitioners work on creating or customizing um, communication template so that they'll be available for you here and all you have to do is click on the template name and it will autofill that template for you instead of having to manually customizing that email every time that you're communicating with an applicant. It will definitely save you some time in the long run. Right. And then down below, like I mentioned, this enhancement is coming to you all on July 11th, so you will have the opportunity to also create templates for text messaging. So once that's available, you'll be able to see those particular uh, text message drop down for communication and you'll be able to select it as well. So I could go ahead and fill out here and then it could send out that text message to those applicants. Go ahead and go back here and cancel. All right. Any questions so far that I could answer for you in regards to anything that we reviewed? Your lines are muted, so you could go ahead and unmute your line by selecting the microphone icon or let me know in the chat box as well. All right, perfect. We'll go ahead and move forward. Now, for each applicant, our candidate profile, you're going to see that you have this action button right next to it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and provide you additional options for each particular applicant. So the view as a PDF file is what we, we saw earlier, and this is exactly as this here. So we just have it under the Actions button as well. So this will be something that will be available for all of you. We also have the opportunity for you to change the application status here. And this could be done through here or it could be done through here where you see this little pencil icon. This will allow you to change the status as well. We just have it in both areas just in case, but this and this will do exactly the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on change the application status here. So once you're uh, ready to move the applicant from let's say phone screen to first interview, first interview to second interview, just depending on your practice, you do have the option to come here and change the status. Um, and all of these statuses will be available for you. So you could say, okay, we went through the phone screen. They were a qualified applicant. Now we're going to go ahead and go through the first interview. I'm going to add some notes for internal purposes. And then you have the option down here to notify the, app the candidate. Again, you will have the option for text messaging coming in July 11th, but for now, you should have the email option. It will automatically add the candidate email address, so you don't have to worry about that. And then it will go ahead and add that auto reply email address, so you could go ahead and change this to your own email address if you like. And um, down at the bottom, you have the reply to email address that you have in your settings. If you want to add one, um, you could add your personal one as well then you'll be able to choose any of the templates that you have. You'll always have the custom template option, but I would highly, again, recommend that you do have templates, um, which will make it a lot easier for you to send out. And then once you have um, made your selection here, then you could go ahead and send that particular template out. All right, we'll go ahead and go back to the actions here and go down the line. So the view application history is what we also saw on the PDF file, but if I click on this, this will actually provide you a list of the audit trail of what has happened with this particular applicant. You'll see that it'll tell you that they were knocked out by the system, depending on how they answer those questions. We also made an offer on this particular day. We're waiting for them to reply to the offer letter. And then I just added this particular option because I changed their status to interviewing process. So now it's showing me that they're on the first interview. So you'll always be able to see this information and then you'll also be able to see their names here. So if you didn't conduct that and somebody else did, then you'll be able to see that information. Mm -hmm. 
right, now we're going to go ahead and go into the next section, which is the uh, view referral portion. And uh, now, let me ask you all, do you all have a referral program in place within your organization? You guys could go ahead and type it in the chat or just let me know if that's the case. If not, I could go ahead and skip this portion altogether. Right, so the view referral option is available for our clients. If you do have a referral program in place, you're able to view the referrals that have been submitted and you'll be able to see by whom it has been submitted. So this will be something that you should keep track of for the system. But we, um, you, you should, yeah, you do have the opportunity to go ahead and implement that at a later time if you're interested. We would need a policy and your guidelines so that way you could go ahead and um, be able to add that into the system and give your employees also an opportunity to refer other individuals to your organization. Now, before we go into manage offer letter or hire candidate, I'm going to go ahead and talk about these additional options down here. So you always have the option to delete the application as needed for um, best practices. We don't recommend it unless, for example, um, the applicant applied, let's say, with this email address here, and then they apply with a different email address, and it's going to create those two different profiles based on the email addresses that they provided in the system. And if that's the case, you could go ahead and merge the account and delete one of them, so that way you won't have it a duplicate. That will be the only reason why you would want to go ahead and delete the application for auditing and compliance purposes. We don't recommend it, but it is available for you here. Um, you also have the opportunity to apply to have this applicant apply to a different position. Let's say that this person is applied for the administrative assistant position here, but they're highly qualified or maybe they're not as qualified, just depending, but they would be a good fit for a different position for your organization. You always have the opportunity to move the applicant from one requisition to the next. All you have to do is click on the apply to another position, and it's going to go ahead and provide you the list of those positions. You would just want to go ahead and go through the list, find the requisition, and select continue. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back here to my actions. Within our system, you could extend offer letters directly through our system. So you could do that by selecting the manage offer letter directly from here. So if I click on manage offer letter, it's going to provide me this option here and actually I've already extended this one, so this might not be a good example here. Let me go back and select another individual. Okay, let's pick none on here. All right, um, so let's say that you want to go ahead and extend the offer letter. Uh, right now, the status is in screen, phone screen, so you want to ensure that you change the status of the applicant to be um, extending an offer. So you want to go ahead and change it to make offer or extending offer, just depending. Enter notes that you like. You don't have to necessarily email the candidate if you don't want to, but you do have the ability to do so. If I wanted to email the candidate and say, hey, we're planning to uh, provide you an extended offer, you could go ahead and utilize the templates that we have supplied to you. We do have some templates that are currently available for you, and this is one of them. All you have to do is select it from that drop down and select send, so it could go ahead and send that particular offer there. Now, once the status is on make offer, then you could go back to the actions button here and select to manage the offer letter. Since you all have this practitioner access, you will be able to see this information. So you will have the opportunity to create your offer letter in the system. By doing so, you will have to select the create offer letter option. Now, um, I'm not too sure if one of you in your organization or somebody in your organization is going to be creating the offer letters for you. Um, we have supplied two offer letters that are currently pre-built into the system for our clients, so you should be able to see those today. But if you have your own specific um, offer letters for your organization that you're currently using, then you do have the option to go ahead and create them and add them into the system if needed. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, I'm going to select it as an hourly offer letter, for example. I'm going to go ahead and click on this offer letter. It's going to go ahead and provide me the template down below. This is the template that we currently supply to our clients, so you can go ahead and remove this if you want to use our template. And then we use a uh, field to go ahead and autofill that information. So everything in blue that you see here autofills based on the applicant and the candidate, um, I'm sorry, from the candidate data information and the requisition that they apply to, it will autofill that offer letter, which will make it really nice for you all. Um, it'll be easier instead of having to manually enter that information, you could simply just do it through here. Everything that's on yellow is another field. You could simply select, and it'll give you the options to go ahead and click the information, which will make it really nice. And I'm going to say that. And enter some information here, so you'll see that it'll start changing the highlighted information in blue. Anything in yellow, you'll still have to go ahead and complete. the frequency and then it all depends on how you have your um, offer letter set up of course so the one that we have includes all of these fields but you're not necessarily include all of this information you get to customize your own templates as well right so everything that I have is already um, completed you do have the option to upload up to 10 different documents if you like additionally to what you already have so if you want to include the i9 and, and non-disclosure agreement, um, any, anything that you usually send with uh, the offer letter is something that you could go ahead and upload into the system as well. I'm going to go ahead and select done here. Now, in our system, you do have the ability to um, create an approval workflow. So I'm not too sure if that's something you are interested in, but this is something that we could absolutely create. So if any of you are creating offer letters or if somebody's creating the offer letter and you need to approve it before it's actually sent out to the, the candidate, then you do have the ability to do so. We would just have to set that up in the back end. You have to let me know who those individuals are. Um, that way we could go ahead and ensure that it's set up before you start creating um, offer letters in the system. If there's no offer letter workflow, that's okay. Then you could simply select yes then for approval and it will automatically approve because we don't have an approval workflow. As you see here, it auto approves the offer letter. Now, as a, as a practitioner, you also have the ability to edit the offer letter. So before you extend the offer, you could always come back and edit it. You could use the icon um, of an eye to go ahead and view the offer letter or you could go ahead and delete it and start from scratch if needed. But I'm going to say that I'm going to extend the offer. And I'm going to go ahead and enter an expiration date. And so typically, you do have expiration dates on offers. So you could go ahead and make that determination, whether it be a week or two weeks, a few days. Just depending, I'm going to say that I'm going to give them until July 2nd to let me know whether they accept or not. I'm going to change the status to um, waiting for reply. And then I'm not going to enter any notes, but I can if I want to. And then I'm going to notify the applicant and say that we're extending the offer here. So it's going to go ahead and provide them this verbiage. And it's also going to provide them the link of the offer letter. So this is really important for them to have the link so that they could go ahead and access the offer letter when you do extend it. Once you select done, it's going to go ahead and send out the um, email and then it's going to go ahead and let you know that it has an expiration date. You could always come back and change the expiration date. You could withdraw the offer if you need to or you could go ahead and change, um, I'm sorry, you could change the expiration down here. You could withdraw the offer or you could change the offer letter. Right, I'm going to go ahead and go back here. Now, once your um, applicant has accepted the offer electronically, then this offer status, so right now you'll see that we have extended the offer, this is going to change to offer accepted. So you're going to be able to see that once the applicant has accepted the offer. Now once the applicant does accept and you're ready to bring them on board, you do have the ability to hire them into the system. So you could do that by going into the actions button here and selecting a hire candidate. Now, what you're going to see in this particular page is exactly what you see when you go to process 
HR hire and rehire. So if you currently do um, enter new hires into the system, that would be similar process. The only difference here is when you select your new hire template, it, the system will autofill all of those that data for you and you don't have to manually enter it, which makes it really nice. So if I click on quick hire, for example, just depending on my templates here, it will, as you see here, it out of field the information that we have from the applicant and then we could just go ahead and move forward with anything else that's required and that was not completed at the time of the application or the requisition did not include it. Once you're done with this information, then you could go to done, submit, and the process of the new hire will be exactly the same as what you're doing today. Um, and it will send out the email for, for registration to the Total Force platform, as well as um, get, getting the onboarding checklist or the checklist that they have to complete as new hires. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here and see if anybody has any questions that I could answer in regards to any of the information. That pretty much completes the portion of you all managing the applicants and moving them through the recruiting process, hiring and extending offers. Any questions that I may answer for you all? Um, your lines are muted, so just ensure that you unmute your button at the bottom of your screen with the little microphone to ask any questions or let me know in the chat and I could go ahead and answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you, Michael. Does somebody have a question? Um, a question here. Great question. So um, we do have the opportunity for you to use, um, so not to use the third-party applicant sites, but to post. So we do have the option for you to post your requisitions in third-party sites. Um, the application data, so the applicant will have to apply through those particular job boards in order to, for the data to come into our system. Now. In July, we're going to get an enhancement where your applicants will be able to apply directly from like LinkedIn and Indeed without having to actually create an application. So the data and information will automatically come over from what they already have in their profile from um, Indeed. So that's something that's new and it's coming in July. But in order to post your, your job boards, I'm sorry, the job boards that you can use in the system, um, it's something that you could go ahead and Activate or not, I'm not sure if all of you are going to be responsible for this or not, but you do have the option to identify what job boards you plan to use. So let me show you on the requisitions here. So once your requisitions are created in the system, this will be the dashboard for all of the requisitions. Now for each requisition, you'll see that whatever is um, highlighted in blue on your right hand side, you have additional information for that requisition. If I go to view change posting settings here, and I'm not sure how involved you all are going to be in this particular section, my understanding was that you guys are not going to go ahead and create requisition, that there's only going to be one or two people within your organization that's going to be managing this portion, but this is where those particular individuals when creating requisition will be able to to post it to the different job boards. So in our system, we have what we call the job target, where you could go ahead and post your requisition to over 25,000 different job boards. The way that this would work is by selecting your career center, the career center that you have branded. When you select to post job, it's going to bring you to the job target website. Based on the requisition that you have created, the system will kind of read the data that you're um, looking for. 
and it will provide you a list of um, job boards that they feel it will be a better fit for you to go ahead and obtain the best qualified candidates for what you're looking for. These are job boards that you could post to, um, and there will be something a la carte that you could go ahead and pay for if you like. Um, and this will be something that you can manage directly from the job target market and not necessarily have to create different um, different accounts outside of ADP or different job boards. Down below here, we have a job posting to individual job sites. We do have um, automatic feed. So today, before the, the um the update, the upgrade that's going to happen in July, you currently have Glassdoor and Indeed. These, both of these job boards are currently included with your package, which means that each requisition that you do create within the system, if this is activated in your settings for your recruitment, it'll automatically post to Glassdoor and Indeed within 24 hours of you creating the requisition. Zip Recruiter will be something that's going to be added on the enhancement coming July 11th. So this is going to be another job board that will be automatically um, activated in the system and it will be part of your account as well, which means that you won't need a, um, a different account outside of ADP for Indeed, Glassdoor, or Zip Recruiter could you can go ahead and use your ADP account to post your job boards too. Down below, we have additional job boards that you can use. Now, for these, Career Builder, Monster, and your social media, Facebook, and LinkedIn, you will need your own credentials outside of ADP. So you need your own accounts for these, but you do have the option to also post to these particular job boards. Hope I answered that question, and I think there's another one. Okay. So great question. So when, so let's say that you have your own job boards um, today, aside from the ones that we provide you, uh, these particular job boards that we provide in our system, when you create a requisition here, it's automatically under the internal or external, just depending on where you're posting. If you're providing uh, career advancement within your organization, then you pretty much will post it internally, but for external purposes, anybody outside of your organization, you could go ahead and click on external Career Center, and under your Career Center that you have um, branded for your organization, you're going to see this particular icon or option, these little dots, and you could go ahead and click on View Post here. When you do that, you're going to there's going to provide you a specific unique URL, and this is the URL that you would want to go ahead and copy paste and post it to any job board uh, third party sites that you're using. So I hope I answer your question there. Any other questions out there? Okay. Let me go ahead and Stop there. Go ahead and unmute one here. Thank you. So any other questions before I let you all go? I know we have about 10 more minutes on this call, so I want to make sure if anybody has any questions, I could definitely answer them at this time. If not, um, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this was helpful to get you a better understanding on how you would manage your applicants through the ADP system. Have a great day.